Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Sunday to everyone. I'm glad to have you all guys here. My name is Hilda and you are watching Aging Happily with Hilda. A fantastic day, an amazing day, super excited. Why? You want to know why I'll tell you. I have a special one here, a special sister. I call her a special sister. She inspires so much. I don't want to get the cat out of the bag because she's going to talk for us, okay? Today, I want us to talk about special people. This is a special month for special people. So I want us to talk about developmental disability. It is developmental disability month, and that's why I call it a special month. Is it for special people? So please, as you join SHARE, this is a word that has to reach out there to many people because we want to bridge a gap. We want to make a difference in the lives of so many people. And we believe you are the one to stand that gap. All of us as a community, together we are going to achieve this goal. So share as you join, like and share. And uh, yes, I don't want to talk too much. As I mentioned, my name is Hilda. I have Zita with me. And she's just going to introduce herself before we get into the proper the proper uh, theme for the day. So Zita, take it and tell us who you are and why you are here. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I am very excited to be here today. Um, and thank you, Hilda, for giving me this unique opportunity to come and share my story with special needs with you guys. As Hilda has already said, my name is Zita. Zita Tengwa Ndiyeshe. Um, I am a special needs teacher. I teach with the Calgary Catholic School Board. I teach at St. St. Mark's School. And in my free time, I still work with adults with uh, mental and developmental disabilities. I am an author of this book. And I also have uh, a baby YouTube channel called Juicy with Zeta. As you can see, my name there is Juicy with Zeta. So I am very passionate about special needs because a lot of things have changed in my life since I, I went down, I took, I went down this path and it has been so amazing. And that is one of the things that led me into starting the YouTube channel because I took skills from my classroom and I knew that these skills are very transferable and I can apply them into my life and it has been amazing and it's it's been phenomenal. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, Zita. I really appreciate that. Guys, did you hear that? She is an author. She is an author. She's going to tell you guys more about that book she just showed us. She is a teacher, a mom. She forgot to mention she's a mom. <laughs> Too many, too many. I don't want to get into the details. Too many. She is a mentor, a mentor, someone who, who inspires and motivates. She is selfless. Yes, we are going to touch all those as we go down. Before we continue, I just want to acknowledge the presence of some of our audience here. We have Love and Kids World watching all the way from Manitoba. Hi, sister. We have Sweet Trini. Thank you for joining. Celeste World from Portugal. Thank you so much for joining us. And please share, share. Let's hear Zita share his, her story here, please. It's very important, very vital. Uh, we have Franklin watching from Calgary. How are you guys? I want to know how you are feeling. It's Sunday and we do appreciate your time here with us. Sunday is always a family day, family time, the time we spend with the family. And we want to acknowledge the fact that you are here with us, considering us as your own family. We truly appreciate your time with us. So uh, Zita, you mentioned that um, why you started your YouTube channel and because of uh, your personal experiences, there is one thing that I really love about what you do, why you are doing all what you are doing. Uh, you mentioned sometime, not really today, that um, you that everybody is a special, has a special need. And you, you know you have that special need as well. That's why you are using your story to impact lives, to in inspire people. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Um, thank you for bringing that up, Hilda. So um, I have been diabetic for 16 years now. And my dad has been diabetic for 40 years. Like, he's my greatest mentor. And I have always said that I am... I am going to beat my dad's record. Like he's 85 now 
if he lives to 100, I'm going to live to 120. Why? And I say it boldly. I say it without any fear because my dad's life is an open book. You just need to take a page from it and you will run with it. And one thing that it's really that has really been coming to my mind these days is that my dad is almost lonely. Like, you know, my mom passed about eight years ago. God bless her soul. And most of my dad's friends are gone. Most of his siblings are gone because they are not living the lifestyle that my dad is living. He still does his exercises every morning. He watches what he eats. He doesn't drink. He is very active. And I think that is what is keeping him going. All right. So let's go back to me talking about special needs. So when I started teaching my classroom, I came to realize that it's not only someone who has a diagnosed disability that has a special need. And in that classroom, I discovered that I had a lot of work to do on my person, on myself. I had to work on my patience. I had to work on my gratitude. I had to work on my why. Why am I doing this job? Is it just to get a paycheck? Then it's, it, it's going to be very boring. It's going to be very unfulfilling. But when I approached my job from that backdrop, I found my job very interesting. And I found that I was not only helping the kids, but in that process, I was helping myself. So I had things that I needed to work on that I started working on. I'm not there yet, but I will tell you very happily that I have come a very long way. Like my kids will do something and I will just look at them and they'll be like, mom, what is happening? You know, they'll expect my African mom reaction, but I will just look at them. I've become more patient. I, and I'm like, go ask my kids. Like I have experienced very um, intense personal growth. One of the things that I also realized is that one of my special needs was diabetes. Like I said, I was diagnosed with diabetes after I had my last child who is turning 17 in June. Can you believe it? Wow. Derry is turning 17 in June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after that uh, postpartum, I started losing weight really fast, but I was very happy. I'm like, I'm losing all that baby weight. But um, I was, it, it came with a lot of other things. So I went to the hospital and I was diagnosed with diabetes. And it's like, you have type 2 diabetes. It runs in your family. There's really nothing you can do about it. So I was resigned to taking um, metformin. But for the past two years, I actually started looking into doing a lot of research about type 2 diabetes. And it's very clear that two diabetes can be reversed. Yep. There is recent research that is coming out now that with behavioral and lifestyle changes, you can reverse type 2 diabetes. And that is why I took on my current lifestyle that I exercise, I meditate, I uh, hydrate, I sleep, and all of these things have worked concurrently to give me a better health span. And that is why I can say boldly that I'm going to beat my dad's record because I know I am aging backwards because I'm doing the right things now. So, and then I also got introduced into juicing, which has also been very, very beneficial. And we live in a society where we are more inclined to eating ultra processed foods. So there's a way that you can get people into eating more fruits and vegetables, which is exactly what our systems have evolved to process. And that's um, what led me to juice it with Zeta. Oh my God. Guys, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed with that information. You know what? If you can do me a favor is to check her out after this live, make sure you check. The name tells it all. You can see juice it with Zeta. That's what she just mentioned, like the last statement, that she has to change her life. Quite often, we, um, that's why I say sometimes we don't know much about diabetes. And when someone has diabetes, they think it's the end of the world. But they forget to know we have two types. There is type one, type two. Type two can be reversible, just as you rightly mentioned, Zita, which I am just so happy the way you take things to reverse that. Something's trying me, you want to beat your dad's record. I love that. And you know what? You are so determined, I can see it daily in your life. So guys, I want you to check her out and learn these tips. Juice it with Zita. Just with juices, vegetables, fruits. She will tell you all when you join her in uh, on her channel. Juice it with Zita. 
Another thing that strikes me, you mentioned your why for doing what you are doing. After going through all what you went through, somebody doesn't want to live with medications, to take metformin as part of your daily meal. That's how I, I always put it. You decided to step in, to take it upon yourself to make those changes by just getting into natural things. Yeah, we are fond of going to the grocery stores, picking canned foods, packaged foods, and stuff like that, thinking we are doing good. For ourselves, we are just not doing anything. So thank you so much for those um, tips. Again, Zita, you mentioned personal growth. Personal growth. If you don't mind, like I myself, I want to learn personal growth. Can you just tell me a little bit of what you engage in to be able to get to where you are, to be able to get off that I don't know how we call it the diabetes or whatsoever. Really, I don't want. I don't. I usually don't want to uh, let people say my diabetes or you know taking an illness to be part of your life or identifying something, an illness to be part of you. So how did you? What were the personal developments that uh, you kind of you you got into that brought you to this level? If you don't mind. Okay, I, I'm going to take you back to my classroom. Um, like, you know, my classroom is a special needs classroom. And one thing that is very important to those kids is consistency. So structure is key. Okay. So as I was building structure around my kids' days, and it, it helped a lot to quell down the anxiety and the behaviors just went down. I'm like, okay, so stru structure is really something. If I implement some structure in my life, then I can have, I can achieve my goals. So I'm like, okay, what behaviors do I need? First of all, I have to come out with an outcome. What is the outcome? What, what do I want to get out of what I want to do? And my outcome is I want to reverse type two diabetes. And lo and behold, I've moved from five pills to one. Like, and my goal is by the end of this year, I am completely off my the diabetic pills. So I realized that structure is something that is very important. So I started doing a lot of research about um, highly productive people. What does their structure, what does their day look like? And I have been tweaking things around for the past two years, and now I have a very rigid structure. I have a very rigid day. My day starts the day before. I am off to bed at 10 p.m. It is, and these are my non-negotiables. There is not like I have to debate. They are my non-negotiables. They are the things that I have been doing for the past two years. So I'm off to bed at 10 p.m. I usually get very restorative sleep. And the first year I will wake up to my alarm at 5.30, but now by 5.30, my body is already well rested and I am up. I don't need an alarm to wake me up. When I get up, um, I say hello to my husband of 25 years. I answer nature's call and I go down to my basement. Like I'm actually airing this now from my basement. If, if I can turn around my camera, you're going to see my equipment that I use. I am an exercise freak. I love to exercise and especially resistance training. I love lifting the weights. Um, I have also, um, my exercise routine that is already scheduled. So when I get up, I'm not thinking about what I need to do. I already know Monday is resistance training. Tuesday is body weight. Wednesday, I'm on my treadmill, just cardio. Thursday, I do my weights. And Friday is yoga and gratitude meditation, bar, pilates. So that's my week. And my weekends are for rest and repair. After my exercise, which usually runs about 30 to 40 minutes, I go back upstairs, make my bed. It, this is very important because I've had a lot of changes that have occurred to me just because I started making my bed. If you want, we can talk about that later on. So I make my bed, arrange my bedroom, have a shower. When I'm having a shower, I usually have cold showers. If you want us to talk about that, we can talk about that too. So I have a warm bath. And then at the, the last one minute, I let cold water run over me. Then I dress up, do a 30 minute meditation. Now I'm doing um, a meditation by Dr. Joe Dispenza. I do a 30 minute meditation just to get me grounded and ready to face my day. 
after my meditation i come downstairs i usually brew my coffee at home um i get a uh, coffee from ethiopia i have a colleague who is from ethiopia she gets me original coffee organic from ethiopia and then i have uh, my o omega juicer actually can grind coffee wow so i grind my coffee and save it and then i brew it the smell of coffee is so good then i have my coffee and i'm off to work and i'm usually at work one hour before school starts when i get to work i do my three minute gratitude journal and then i start getting my classroom ready and i'm ready for for the day i usually do not take breakfast so i also do intermittent fasting i skip breakfast and i only eat after 1 p.m I have just a salad for lunch and then I have a regular supper before 7 p.m. so that I have enough time to digest my food three hours before I go to bed at 10. And then in the evening, I just lay in bed by 9.30, do a yoga nidra just to get me settled and I'm out. Oh my God. Guys, I don't know if you guys are getting this. Just so much, like it's too much. We preach here aging happily, aging happily, how we can age happily. This is an example of someone who age happily, I must tell you. I'm not talking from uh, uh, somebody like saying somebody told me, I know her personally. And it's mind blowing what this lady does. Trust me, guys. I sometimes I ask her what she's like, how she's coping with all what she's explaining here. I tried and you know what? At one moment I said, that's, I always say hard labor to her. Whatever she tells me to do, I'm like, I can't do that. The weight she's lifting, guys, yes, she is the one aging happily. I don't know. I, I kind of preach it, and then she is put it in, putting it in practice. I hear you for that big sister. You it's are, one day at a time, I did. <laughs> yeah, you are doing amazing, amazing. You Thank mentioned you. consistency. That's something that people don't know, but it plays a lot in our lives, in everything. It's not just for our health, but everything. Anything that you want to do in life, in addition to setting a goal, you even when you start it, you have to be consistent. You have to structure to put a structure to it. Like having all what you explain here, every day, doing that every day, you never miss a step. And it's non-negotiable, you mentioned. Wow, it's amazing. I just I just love the way you do it and keep going. Do you mind telling us a little bit about, I always scream in the washroom when I go, when I use the, you know, the cold shower. It is really good, guys. I love it. It's good. But I scream each time I have to try it. Um, Zita, I don't, uh, I don't want us to get too much into it, but can you share more light on the advantages of a uh, cold shower? I, I, I have an idea, but if you can let uh audience just learn something. I know it helps us. It helps even our pores, like, you know, and bring us out, like, from internally. So if you can share some light on that, we really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, Hilda. So um, having a cold shower, like, now I can do three minutes. But if you want to try it, start with five seconds. And always start small. I always say start small and gradually build out. And it's important to know the reason why, because that's what will motivate you to keep going. So why do I have a cold shower? I always start with a warm shower like everyone else, and then I end up with a cold shower. Why? Because I want to put myself in a place of adversity. I want to put my system in a place of adversity. Because every time you get to a place of adversity, you come back stronger. Okay, take for instance, our body is not used to cold. So when you subject your body under a cold shower, which is not naturally used to getting a cold shower, it freaks your body out. And your body is like, I am in danger. And what happens? It activates your sympathetic nervous system, whose job is to keep you safe. And when it activates that, you are in effect building your immunity. Because when your um, sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system is activated, it's not going to send weak antibodies to fight. It is going to find, fight the, to um, send strong antibodies to defend you. And if this is happen, happening over and over, it is going to start putting away the weak antibodies 
And every time it happens, it's going to summon strong antibodies. So in that process, you are building your immunity. Secondly, there's also something that is called brown fat. We have two types of fat. We have adipose fat and we have brown fat. And this brown fat is called brown fat because it has a lot of mitochondria in it. The mitochondria is the energy center of our cells. So the more mitochondria we have, the more we can uh, make energy for ourselves. So that is the job of uh, brown fat. So the more brown fat you have, the better for your system. So I am building my immunity and I'm building brown fat at the same time while I am having a cold shower. Wow, thank you so much, Azita. Building immunity and <clears throat> it's, it's just a lot. She just got into nursing, like, I, I, I don't know. She just got everything from cells to uh, immunity to flight and to fight and flight. You mentioned a lot. Let's just acknowledge a couple of people here. We have Robert. Oh my God, thank you, bro, for joining us. Nuba Bina Grace. Oh my God, she is just so funny. Welcome, Sister Grace. Uh, Franklin said, I have started the routine of having a stream of cold water run on me after a warm shower and can, awesome. re and can withstand a cold stream for up to a minute. Kudos, guys. Yeah. Yes, Franklin, that's, that's the way to go. Good job for you. And uh, yes, thank you so much for the highlights about the cold shower, uh, Zita. Just, just because you mentioned that, I'm like, let others just learn. So let's dive into the theme for the day. So this month is Developmental Disability Month. Special needs. A lot going on in our society. People or the society tend to neglect kids with special needs. They don't give them the respect and dignity that they deserve as other typical kids. We don't know why. That's why we are here today, that together we are going to bridge this gap. We are going to cut this off. It's, it's just unheard of. How kids, we call, they are gifts. They came the way uh, in, in God's creature. That's how God made them. But sometimes we, we don't regard them like other uh, typical kids. I don't know the reason for that. I will ask a question here, Zita, um, just for our audience as well. Do you stare, like give a stare to mom whose kid is having a, des a developmental disability? Yes. I know why I'm asking this question because even you go around like in our community, you see some of those kids, how they are struggling. And some people are just at one angle talking about those kids or talking about that particular kid or even mentioning that the parents are not looking after that kid or you know i don't know if you experience that uh azita what advice can you give us um when you come when it comes to how the society is looking after these kids looking the way the kids are behaving in the community what advice can you give us how can we approach these kids in a way that is is like in a loving way if you can just say something that will be great yeah um here that that is actually the, the meat and potatoes of this issue and i would like us to take a step back and i i have learned to be to be considerate and to be gentle with ourselves first of all how much do we know about disabilities there's very little that we know. If you go to chapter two of my book, I'm talking about stigma, how far we have come from our beliefs. So at first, kids with developmental disabilities in, in Africa will be put by the river and the river will wash them away. They were considered a curse from the gods. Lately, they are not even exposed to communities like they are kept on the lock and key. And we still carry that stigma with us, even if we have come to the Western world with all the exposure that we have, we still have that stigma at the, at the back of our minds. And even parents with kids with special needs still carry that stigma. And so a lot of these parents are in denial. And so their kids do not have the opportunity to access the resources that are available. But I am not going to blame them because how much do we know? How open are we to, to know what is necessary to help kids or families who have kids with special needs? And that is actually what led me to write this book because 
it actually chronicles the story of my niece, Lydia. Um, Lydia faced a lot of challenges and my sister, who is a medical doctor, had to give up her job to take care of Lydia because in Uganda, she was not getting any help that she needed. She went to school. She will be beaten at school if she uh, has an accident. She will be isolated. She will not be helped to eat at, at uh, lunchtime. She, she stays hungry all day. She is mocked at. She did not have any friends. And she was such an angel. Like, I, I know she's one angel that um, we have in heaven. And, yeah, so how much do we know and how, how, how much are we willing to learn in order to have more exposure and association with families having kids with special needs. So it's 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 for us, like what you're doing right now is really applaudable. We are putting the word out there so everyone has an opportunity to hear and to know so that tomorrow ignorance should not be an excuse. Wow. Um, Zita, you mentioned you, you went to the Down syndrome that I was I was still coming to eat. I wanted you to share that story, but you mentioned it already. Uh, Denaya, that's I think that's something that is huge uh, in our community as well. People don't even want to accept that their kids are in this condition. And you mentioned we don't want to blame them because of our background, where we are coming from, matters a lot. We used to call some of those people Obanje, like Obanje, they call them fools, like names, names. It's just unfortunate. And uh, we rightly mentioned, we cannot blame those uh, those moms. But at the same time, are we open to learning, to knowing exactly what disability is, what it entails? They say knowledge is power. Some people shy away from even getting this knowledge. I think sometimes it's because of the stigma, which um, really, I don't know how we can actually uh, break this. Zita, I don't know. Is there a way that uh, you can encourage us? Like, just tell us how we can break this stigma, how we can help uh, to facilitate this situation, to help moms to feel at ease with what they are experiencing with their kids who have special needs. OK, so. Um... That, that is awesome, Hilda. And I always say, instead of cursing the darkness, light the candle. So <clears throat> after I wrote my book, and a lot of times, because these kids with special needs do not have a form of livelihood, most of them are panhandling, they are dependents. Community doesn't give them any kind of regard. So because I wanted to light a candle, because I wanted to make to empower special needs people so they can be able to earn a living and because they can earn a living it can help towards changing that stigma because just saying that oh you need to change the way you deal with or the way you approach people with special needs doesn't change people's mentalities but once these people have a source of livelihood once they can earn money and raise their own families people will start having respect for them and that is how that is what led me this is the idea behind my breakfast for change program so all the sales of my book like all the money that i sell this book i have sold about 1500 copies of this book now all the sales is going to fund the breakfast for change program and why do i call it breakfast for change i'm offering breakfast so that when these people are empowered it's going to change people's mentality towards special needs so this breakfast for change program is operated in our lady of Consolation Special Needs Center in Bambili, where these kids come. It's a craft center. They just come and learn how to make crafts. And then it's run by the local Catholic parish, which provides that which provides um lunch to these kids. And so I thought these kids have to walk long distances from the village to get to three corners where the center is. And so I'm like, I should be able to provide breakfast to these kids. And I've been doing that for the past year and it has been amazing. Um, yes, Zita, I thought you will. I was praying that we should go through this without me seeing what you are just doing. I know she is very passionate in what she does and she cries each time she shares her story. Okay, guys, just, just ignore the emotions. It's just 
Oh no, he, yeah, they shouldn't ignore it. It's okay to be vulnerable. They shouldn't ignore it. Right. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So um, she just mentioned something quite interesting. I think one time, most often, we tend to neglect these people because we feel they don't have anything to offer to their community, to their society, and nobody's doing anything to impact them, to see that change in them. They have skills. They have things that they came with that we don't, um, you know, we, we don't get to learn and discover uh, these potentials in them. Until when we get them to put out these potentials, we then tend to realize that they have something to offer to the society. Maybe that's when we are going to um, maybe admire or see that they can really offer something to the community. And yes, why can't we step into doing all those things? You mentioned something um, instead of cursing the darkness. Yes. Instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle. Light a candle. Yes. Zira is lighting a candle. She just mentioned about her breakfast program. That's a way that she's uh, trying to impact these kids, the lives of these kids and their families. It's a craft center. I know it personally. I have seen it like move from one step, like it has grown like you won't even imagine. We applaud you for that, sister, for all what you are doing. Keep doing it. The craft work, like seeing them doing all those things. So many people back home, bumbling spe specifically, they are buying those, uh, you see those kids making slippers, uh, beads, baskets, and all those things. It's with the help of our sister Zita. So I really, really appreciate I We just support behind, like we are just behind the scene. We are not there to see exactly what you are doing. I advocate for special needs. I, I, I work with them. I know they are the vulnerable, but what I've seen you, like I've seen you doing, the way you've transformed your lives is touching, is touching. That being said, guys, let me seize this opportunity to just ask Zita how um, we can get to, you know, we can get to support this project because I know it takes a lot. Having given breakfast to those kids, there are many of them. I, I know it. There are so many of those kids and, you know, getting their transportation from their, their quarters to that center, getting them to, to have that breakfast every day. You know, I remember last time you even provided them with some school needs, materials and stuff like that. That was amazing. Zita, can you tell us how, uh, how we can support this project? I know you have your book. I'm going to touch that uh, in, a, in a bit. How can we support that particular uh, breakfast program so that we can keep those kids going? You mentioned about consistency. Yes, yeah. they are special needs. <clears throat> they, they rely on us on a daily basis. So the moment we stop doing that, we are ending their lives. Their potentials are going to die. That's how we'll come to realize they don't have any value in the society again. The head set in. We tend to neglect them, no love. So Zita, just give us uh, maybe how we can support you in that particular uh, project. That would be great. Okay, Hilda, um, I'll be remiss if I do not appreciate all the support I've been getting. Like I am just the face behind this. Um, there is a lot of support I am getting. It is overwhelming. I want to say thank you to all those who have been very supportive of this course and. I have said it's a lifelong commitment. Wow. Yeah, it's a lifelong commitment. I have told my kids, even I'm not here, they have to continue doing it. So, yeah, and how you guys can help, um, maybe I can put my email in the chat. You can shoot me an email or call me and we can talk about how it's running. Um, you can also grab a copy of my book from Amazon or you can email me. I have copies of my book here and I'm very willing to ship it out to anybody who is willing to, to read through this and actually experience firsthand uh, the challenges that families with special needs kids face and what we can do to, to make it a little bit better for, for families having kids with special needs. We cannot do it for all families, but we have to start somewhere and like a ripple effect is going to spread to all areas of the world. Wow. 
Thank you. I yes, you guys heard that. And uh, if you can, you can send a message to me directly. I can get to her if you want to help in any way. Like just drop of water, like little drops will make an ocean, as we always say, guys. It doesn't matter. So do well to help these kids. Appreciation. Yes, she's someone who appreciates a lot. And I really, that's really good. Uh, Zita, it's a good practice to always acknowledge those who, who, who are supporting. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that. Just let me just acknowledge some people. Oh, uh, well, Joyce Lynn said, cold water for winter. I die here. So she <laughs> said she cannot try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then Stella's world said, yeah, denial is the cause. Denial is the cause for this all what we are going through about development yeah and it's coming from that place of stigma right right yeah yeah i truly i agree with you celeste well we all are human created in god's image and likeness irrespective of our conditions we should learn to accept people the way they are and uh, to relate to this you you mentioned something when we say special needs, we always think, oh, somebody who is having Down syndrome, somebody who has, uh, who is autistic, somebody who is, uh, you know, all those things. Yes, Zita just mentioned, she is a special need as well. Yeah. She's been struggling with diabetes for the past few years. Though is something from, maybe from the dad, is type two, running in the family. It doesn't matter. It's still a special need. We all have special needs. Like, uh, you might be suffering from uh, blood pressure, inconsistency, all those things, heart issues. You, you are not perfect. We all have issues. So I, I love the way you actually, um, you know, that was well articulated, Zita, so that we don't just see those who have uh, special needs as, as those who, have, who are uh, having like Down syndrome, who are autistic and stuff like that. It's a lot. It's a lot to, to, to that. Um, hi, host, uh, Linda. Classroom tips with Linda. Welcome, sister. Franklin says, instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle. Like everybody loves that statement. If there is just one thing I take away from this interaction, that is it. Yes. The only thing Franklin got is instead of cursing the darkness, Light a candle, guys. Impact the lives. If you see this child with a special need is lacking in this particular aspect of life, make a change. Do something. Zita saw that these kids, they needed breakfast. They needed something every day to keep them going. That is why she engaged into giving them breakfast daily. Amazing, guys. Uh, hi, Zita. That's a shout out from Linda. Celeste Wall is saying, I love what you, you are doing, Zita. Putting a smile on someone's face is very important. Yes. And what else? Thank that gives inner satisfaction, guys. I mentioned yeah. Zita is selfless. It's something that you feel, you feel different when you are selfless. Putting a smile to people, you have a different feeling. There is more, hap there's happiness in giving more than receiving. I don't know if you guys um, feel that way, but that's my personal experience. I feel happy when I give, that when I receive. So it should be the same for everybody. Disability is not inability. I love that Celeste word. And that's what these kids, I'm just going to uh, maybe to relate to these kids. We never knew they could do those baskets, the crafts work. The slippers, all the, 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 the beats. We never knew those kids could do that because we say they are disabled. It means they, they have nothing in mind. They have no potentials. It's only when we got into, you know, getting them trying things out that we, we realize these potentials in them. So disability doesn't mean somebody is, is not able to do anything. It doesn't mean inability. Like Celeste World just uh, just mentioned, that's a great insight, uh, Celeste World. Thank you. So we should learn to accept them the way they are. True. Hi, Celeste World from uh, Linda. Hi, Celeste World. Hi, Franklin from Linda. Okay. Happy Sunday. Wow, Auntie Zita, 
you have a great heart for humanity. Yes, I told you guys, the only way we can help her out. Guys, check her out. Check her YouTube channel to learn more. She got a why for doing what she is doing. There is a reason for starting, for writing her book. You want to know that, guys. It's just a way to inspire all of us. She got a reason for doing what she's doing to the kids in, uh, in Bambili. And your why always keep is keeping you going, guys. So if your why today could be like getting this inspiration from Zita, it's going to go a long way. She got a heart of inhumanity. That's true. May God continue to bless you, Zita. That's Amen. a blessing yeah, from grace. <laughs> She's just... Amen. Thank you. Since and and Hilda, let me just let me just chime in here a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm gonna share one of my secrets with you because um a lot of people are asking, how do you come up with all these ideas? Yeah. How, 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 what is happening? How, how, how what, why are you? What inspire you? <laughs> what, what is your motivation? I meditate every morning. Um, I am Catholic, but now I am more spiritual than religious. And meditation connects me to that higher being, to the universe every morning. And I set my intention that I want to be of service to humanity. And because I'm connected to that higher being, that higher being gives me the ideas and it directs me on how to execute them. So if you want to be of service, if you want to live a happy life, Hilda, I am very happy now. Like, I know that tomorrow is not a given. I know that tomorrow, if tomorrow comes, it's a bonus. So I am in that place where I live my days to the fullest. And I know that if tomorrow comes, then I will become a better version of what I was today. So I don't live my life like looking, building castles in the air. I'm in the here and now. And the only way you can be in the here and now is when you're connected to the higher being, when you're grounded. And meditation does an awesome job with connecting you to that higher being. So if you can, if you don't take anything out of what I've said today, go on YouTube. There are multiple meditations on YouTube. Start with a five minute meditation. Start with a two minute meditation and then gradually walk your way up. I bet you, if we do this one year from today and you have been meditating, you will have a story to tell. Okay. That's the free gift to you. <laughs> free gift, guys. Meditation. Yes. I, I know sometimes we complain so much about time and stuff like that. But we, at the same time, we are using the data to check um, stuff on, you know, on Facebook and talk about friends and stuff like that. Use your five minutes and do your meditation daily. Choose your time. Maybe Zita is doing hers early in the morning. I try sometimes. Some, it doesn't work all the time. But if you, you need to start somewhere, you need to start somewhere. It helps a lot. Most often quite really, really good when you start it at the start of the day. It's really good. I learned something from you, Zita. You are saying you, you, you meditate. Um, in addition to that, you connecting to, you know, um, to God. Like, let me put it that way. You oh yeah, you can call you can call you can call you can call the higher being whatever. You exactly. call it God. A Muslim will call it Adla, Allah. Yes, yes, um yes. a man will call it Nwingo. Uh, a Bakosi man we, so they have different appellations for the same person. For the same person. So whoever or how how you call it, yes. Mm -hmm. Do it. That's that's really a bonus. And Zita, we talk about so much. Like we talk about how we can age happily. I love you, man, like you mentioning you are a happy uh, human being now. You don't care about what happens tomorrow. You live your life today as if there is no tomorrow. I know you always tell us that you tell your kids, you say, if you die today, that is okay. And because you are living the life to the fullest, you are doing the things, you are doing things accordingly. Not waiting to build something someday. If you have the opportunity today, you do it, and we all are seeing it. I just love that. I don't know, guys, if you heard that. Yes, so many comments in the chat. I think they are just so they are just confirming what you mentioned. That's a great bonus, um, Zita. There is something about um, special needs that I want to ask, like some few questions again. 
Yeah. Um, I notice sometimes husbands, <laughs> let me put, let, I want to be really specific. They tend to leave kids with special needs with their uh, spouses, with, with their wives. Is it still the stigma? They don't, when they go to the community or for something or just for social gatherings, they don't really want to pay attention or go close to those, to their kid. They prefer to send it to the, to the mom or, you know, to the wife. Is it, I don't know, how, why are they doing that? Is it still the stigma? They don't want to identify anyway. themselves with the kids. Um, I don't know. I've seen that. I don't know why. And how can we help with uh, with that? Some don't even want to hug their kids who who are special needs in public. How how can we help with with such? I don't know. Anyway, Hilda, um, I I I don't think I I have the 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 savvy to to dig into their minds to okay. understand why they are behaving that way. I cannot really speak on their behalf. But what I would say is it kind of cuts across the board for most African men. It's yes. not very specific. Like Franklin is very exceptional. Like if I want to say men who take care, like roles are even switch, I would say. <laughs> roles are switched in that case. Like he's an unusual African man who is invested in his kids, who takes care of his kids regardless he will carry them on, on his back he will feed them and all of that but the study school for african men is to leave the raising of the kids to the woman so it's not very specific to families with special needs kids um and so for that reason women spend more time with their kids and so you will understand uh your kid better than the dad who doesn't spend as much time with the child and so for a kid with special needs, because they would spend much time with mom, mom is going to identify their triggers. Mom is going to identify ones that they're just seeking attention or behaviors or uh, situations where they really need some cuddling. And mom will also know uh, the mechanisms or the strategies that she can use to calm them down. So moms are, and, and we are we are wired for that. Naturally, as moms, we are wired for that. So in that regard, we have more expertise towards managing or raising kids. So to me, that is it. And because we do this frequently, we now have more patience with kids. So that is why even the kids can sense it. One thing that really struck me with my classroom is because most of my kids are non-verbal, but they communicate in their own way. Like, my principal comes into class and one child is doing something and I'm like, this is what the child needs. And once they give the child the thing, it, they just, it just comes down. She says, how do you know it? I'm like, wow. the, the lens through which you approach things is very important. I go to my classroom because I want to make a difference. I go to my classroom because I want to uplift. I want, I want to be in these kids' lives and, and make them happy and make myself happy too in the process. So I go there determines to learn to learn about their behaviors their triggers and all of that and it took me two years and now i know them on my fingertips and so it's very and my mom instincts to come in a lot of times so that helped me too in this journey so as moms we are naturally wired for that and we stand a better chance to to um give these kids what they really need but that doesn't um say that that's um can, can take a ring check with raising kids. No, they have to be involved with raising these kids. And at times when they go out in public, it's time to give the, 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 the mother some respite, you know, take over care for the kids so the woman can also socialize. Because most of the times we are so, we are so carried away with taking care of uh, uh, the families that we forget to take care of ourselves and we don't socialize. So, those are opportunities for us to, to socialize and it would be nice if the dads can chime in and um, help with um, looking after the kids. Powerful, powerful. Great job, Zita. Yeah, you mentioned something. Yeah, I, I was about to ask that question because, yeah, respite, when they go to the community, actually that's a great opportunity for them to rest. And I think it's just, it's been normal for us to 
you know, to help those kids when they go out to socialize. And one thing, we, um, they are, we call them atypical. I don't know, Zita, that word, I don't know if it's the right word, and people are using it. Um, they don't feel like uh, maybe bringing them in the same uh, social gathering, like taking them for swimming together with other typical kids to all uh, to 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 just socialize. I I I don't know. I know in schools, some schools they have special needs uh, like area like they are separated from those typical kids. Yeah. I don't know if, if you experience that. Is yeah. that just okay or? Um, there is kind of a bias to that. Um, you know, that's what I thought before, before I got into special needs. Like my classroom is a special needs classroom okay. in a typical school. So I have my classroom of eight kids who are special needs in a regular school. So we have integration opportunities for these kids to go into like a grade three child will go into another grade three class for gym or for art, just so that they can um, integrate with other kids. But one thing that you also need to know is if a kid that has autism, for instance, has a trigger with loud noise, if you take that child to a place where you have loud noises, you're just setting that kid up for failure because the loud noise is going to raise their anxiety and they're going to have a meltdown. So you have to factor all those things in before, um, before registering your child for, for programs. Like, and it also comes with identifying the likes and the interests of this child because we, we want them, we want to build on their strengths. We don't want to set them up for failure. So I have one kid in my class, she's a ballerina, like she's just three years old. She does gymnastics, like and she has not learned it from anywhere. So that's somebody that can be directed towards um dancing or gymnastics. I have another one who is very good with numbers, like he's only eight years old, but the things that he does, I call him my Elon Musk. So it's identifying what the like. There's another one that draws very well. And when you give her the iPad, she goes to nail salons. So I'm like, that is what she can learn. She can go to a nail salon and learn how to design nails because she's already telling you that is where my interest is. But if you do not invest that time to find out what their interests are, what are you going to build on? So you're just going to be trying, it's just going to be trial and failure. And then you are setting them up and then it's just, it's, it's not going to be rewarding. So once you invest the time to find out what their likes and interests are, what their triggers are, what strategies you can use to calm them down, then you can fact, you can put all those together and come up with a unique program for them. Like I have a plan, my retirement is a special needs school in Bambili, a world-class special needs school and I'm walking towards that. It, it's going to be done. Yes, it is done. Yes, it is done. It's not going to. It is done. I, I just love that. I love that motivation, Zita. And you are a specialist. You, have, you really explain, make it clear to us why we don't have to maybe bring these kids together. When you tend to know where their interest lies, you know exactly where to place them. And it is huge. Yeah, I know some kids, they don't go along, like they don't get along with some people who are so noisy and stuff like this and that, like that. So just getting them into a noisy environment is just going to set them off, like you mentioned. And even touch Hilda, some of them will not want you to touch them in specific places. And if a kid wow. is having a meltdown in public wow. and you just go there to assist and you touch them where they don't want to be touched, it just wow. triggers them and it yeah. blows things out of proportions. Yeah. So there, there's a lot that plays in that you really, if, so, if a kid is having a meltdown and you see people moving away, there's a lot that has to, that, that plays in. Like, it's not just that they don't want, they don't um, care. It's just that there's a lot that, that has to come into play for them to, to, to regulate. Wow. You know what? You, you're just doing something that uh, not everyone would do. Is um, It takes time. It takes patience. It takes most especially a good heart to do what you are doing, Zita. We really applaud you for that. Like, it's it's not easy. Thank you so much for breaking it down for us. And um, I want you to talk about um, unwrapping the gift, that title. I really want you to talk a little bit about it, just in a second. 
Um, there's uh, oh my god, so many messages here. Let me just acknowledge it, Zita. God bless you for such great work, Zita. You are right, Zita. We might not be able to help everyone with a special need, but the one person you help means the world to that person. Yes, that so called children with, with disabilities are often very talented. I dare say they have uh social uh, special gifts yes yeah. Yeah. some are experts in mathematics drawing yeah. and sewing just to name these few yes frankly you have experienced a lot i know you work with people with uh with persons who who have developmental disabilities as well you're talking from experience and that's so true grace says special needs attention we really need to deconstruct our mind, our mindset, and embrace people with special needs. Absolutely, Grace. We really need to encourage these kids by buying their crafts and putting them on. Yes. Do these kids sell their crafts? Oh, that's a question, Zita. Yes, they do. Um, if you go to the center in Bambili, they have a display room where the crafts are displayed. And if you're in North America, um, I'm trying to bring... Um, a bag of um, the items that they have made. So by July, it should be here. Perfect. So Grace, we can talk about that more. If you have any questions or any way you want to support, please just get to me or talk to Zita. Uh, Debbie's Corner is here. Welcome, Debbie. Juba Bruce, welcome. Joyce Lynn says, having a disability just means that person learns differently and is unique in his, her way of doing things. Absolutely. Hi, host and co host Happy Sunday. Thank you, love and kids work. Um, Grace, my first time to meditate, I ended up with a plate of rice and chicken in my hand. Zita, you know, that's just telling you that some people, they, you know, it takes a lot or some people really don't oh, yeah. know how to do it. Yeah. But oh, it's, yeah. it, it's like a skill, right, guys? So you take it slowly and you get there. And my very own daddy is here. Is he done you? Oh, my goodness. Hilda and Zita, kudos. You are making a positive impact in the lives of many. Every human is unique and should be valued irrespective of their disability. Thank you so much, Isidor. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Great tips you have there, Zita. Yes, check on Zita, guys. Keep it up. I can imagine God will bless you, dear. So many blessings, Zita. <laughs> it's for all of us. <laughs> yes. Thank Amen. you. Matida Fim, hi, host, and everyone. Uh, Ed Varieties, you showing up. Welcome. Hi, host. Thumbs up, Don. How are you doing? We are good. We are good. Uh, yes, lovely. And that's okay. I admire your patience and dedication, Zita. Thank you for that, Franklin. That's what Franklin says. Uh, Tessie Tony, hi, host, and everyone. Welcome, Tessie. So we are talking about disability today because March is Developmental Disability Awareness Month. And I have a special one here, Zita, who is just sharing her story about uh, developmental disability. She is a special needs teacher. She got a lot with her and she's just coming here to share with us. So you join when she has been talking. So we are just maybe in a couple of minutes we'll be running up. But Zita, I want you to talk about unwrapping the gift. Let me know where you got that inspiration and why did you decide to choose that? How can we get this book? Because I, yeah, I bought it, I shared it, I bought so many and I shared it to a family and friends as gift because we need to know what it is, what special needs entails. Knowledge is power, guys. Until when I got this book, yes, I didn't know what it is. Please, guys, let just hear her talk. Okay, Hida, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about my book. So, um, unwrapping the gifts is like every child is a gift and it takes effort to raise a child. And this effort is different for every child. Like I have three kids and they are so different. They are so unique in their own ways. And what strategy works for Mary does not work for Brittany, does not work for Daryl. Right. So that differentiation piece is key. And because it's different for everyone, you have to take time to unwrap the gifts that God has given you because every child is a gift. So 
what, how much effort do we put to unwrap the gifts that God has given us? And somebody just said in the comments there that these special needs kids have kids have unique talents and they are gifted uniquely. So when you take time to unwrap this gift that God has given you, then you're going to um, come face to face with the beauty that lies beneath that disability. And this name Hilda came to me in one of my meditations. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. You see the power of meditation, guys? Grace, you said when you were doing your meditation, you just, you had but a plate of rice and chicken and whatsoever. Zita meditated and she got this name. The name came up, guys. Meditation is huge. I, I just love the way where that name is coming from. Unwrapping the gift. Until you get to, and I've seen you, uh, you are really doing the, you are really unwrapping those gifts, trying to know who those kids are, to know where their potentials are, what they like, their dislikes. So you can better up their lives is huge. I just love that. And um, so Zita, you mentioned already, if you want that book, we can get it through Amazon. And, yeah. Um, yes, guys, if you connect with Zita, Zita has, um, you have an IG page as well. So you can connect yes. personally. Yes, we'll Yeah. Yes. And then she can tell you where to get it. Like it's on Amazon. You can actually check it out. Really, really good. Uh, Zita, one quick question before we, we go. You used to be, um, I know, a regular classroom teacher. And now you are so much in helping those with special needs. It's like, like they are <laughs> like and, <they. laughs> and uh, it's it's mind blowing. It's a it's a a strong decision to make. It's a very difficult, a tough one to make. What were your challenges when you uh you know when you started this process, when you discover that maybe you went for an interview instead of the administration sending you to a typical class, classroom, they send you to um, a classroom with special needs. What were your feelings the first day? Uh, was that, how did you take it? Was it just easy to flow with or you were, you know, um, discontented? Just share with us. Okay, so um, it's a little misguided what you said, but um, I'll just make some put some clarity in there. Okay. So I was teaching in a regular classroom, a grade six classroom in May of 2018. And normally with the Catholic board, when you have a temporary contract, after that, they will give you a probationary contract. So jobs were sent out for people to apply. I applied for like 13 positions. And mm. it's only this job that they called me in for, for the interview. Wow. And so when I went for the interview, um, I, I had some background with developmental disability because I had been working with Calvary Scope Society, but this is teaching. So it was a little bit different. So I went for the interview knowing that it was a special needs classroom. But after that interview, I, they gave me the job that day. Then um, I came to meet the teacher who was in that classroom and she had had a very terrible experience. She, it was her first year teaching. She never had any child. And that's why I said, my mom instincts played a very crucial role in my role as uh, uh, an educational support teacher. So she, she had a very bad experience. And when she shared her experience with me, I, I had a brutal summer that year because I'm like, did I make the right choice? Maybe I should have not taken this last room. But in my meditation during that summer, I was meditating on my why. Right. Why do I... Why in the first place did I want a teaching job? Because when I came to Calgary, my goal was to have a teaching job. Was it just to have three months of summer? I can't wait. Three months of summer holidays, paid. Or why? Why did I want to become a teacher or did I want to impact lives? And if I wanted to impact lives, why am I choosing which life I want to impact? So I meditated a lot on how to approach this and... I just got clarity on how to go about it. Go in there like a blank slate. Go in there ready to learn and with the desire to impact lives. The first year was, it was terrible. But because I went in there every day because I wanted to learn, it just became easier and easier. Like my, 
you come into my classroom if you don't see the regular back and forth movement which is very common with kids with autism or a tree from another child you know you will never think it's an it's an es2 classroom we call it educational support classroom you will never think it's a classroom of kids with special needs whom someone would think have behaviors from morning to night it's a nightmare it's not i would say it anywhere anytime my life has changed because i am a special needs teacher and there's a lot that has it, it, it has just been like a domino effect. And just before we go, maybe I should mention this. I also took a health coaching course. So I am graduating as a certified health coach in April next month. And I am also taking courses to be a certified juice therapist because I want to I, I want to come out there as a specialist and to help people to make lifestyle changes. I have said that I want to beat my dad's record. My dad is 85 now. I don't want to get to 85 and I don't have any friends around me because this is the time to make those lifestyle changes so that you can reach 85. So, and I have also learned because I'm saying it and people are turning a deaf ear, I'm making younger friends now. My friends are 30 year olds. So that when I'm 85, I have friends who are in their fifties and we can still relate, you know? So please, I am making a clarion call. Please, we are living in a society that is fast paced. It's easy for someone to pop a pill and drink and think that it helps. It doesn't, it has long-term effects. There are simple things you can do to yourself to live a healthy life. I am 44, I say it, I don't look 44 because I am putting in the work now, please. Let's do it one day at a time. I have given a plethora of things you can do. You don't have to do it. It has taken me time to build myself around my schedule. Take one thing and start. Make a commitment to yourself. Show up for yourself. We work very hard. We make investments. Oh, I am making an investment for retirement. Are you sure that when you get to retirement, you'll be able to tell a check? You'll be able to hold a pen to fill that check? You'll be able to go to... To, to board a plane and go to Bahamas, will you be able to do that? Or you'll be locked up in a nursing home. So a lot of times we don't sit back to think about these things. But when you think about them, instead of eating that rice, you will meditate so that you can make changes in your life. Instead of enjoying warm water all the time, you will have some cold water run over you because you are investing in your health so you can reap your benefits in the future. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I am not going to mention anything, to say anything, to add anything to what Zita just mentioned, because I was planning to just tell her to give us a word of advice. Am I correct, Zita? I think you just tell us uh, what, you know, like last word for the day. I was yeah. planning to ask you that. And you, you told us everything. Isida actually just said, uh, Grace, Maybe the picture of rice Grace had during her meditation is a pointer that she needs to help feed the hungry. Who knows? Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> so true, Good so job, true. <laughs> oh, my God. Zita, thank you so much for that advice. I really, um, you know, you've touched lives today. Thank you so much. It's, you've done a lot. We are seeing it. I say some of us, we preach, we talk about how we can age happily, you are practicing it and you just gave us all the tips all what you are doing to be able to achieve what you are now you are 44 i always tell you you look 25. <laughs> and you know what this guy i well i'm sorry to say this zita you might not like it she's been married for 25 years old you won't even yeah yes she'll be celebrating soon guys check her out check her out so we are running up uh, on your health with Mary. You missed the show, but you know what? Just replay and you're going to learn all the beautiful tips. I really want to thank you all guys for joining us today. Um, Zita, today we're talking about disabilities. Like this month, can you just tell us one sentence before we go? What should we do for this month? It's almost done. I know tomorrow is Down Syndrome Day specifically. Um, how can we impact those this month? Like, how can we spread the news? Can we just try to help people around with disabilities or 
it's, it's a special month for special people. What can we do in a special way to impact the lives? Then we can run up with the show. Okay, Hilda. Um, for me, consistency is very key. It's not just to do something for one day and then we go back and then we come back here. What I would say is you cannot give from an empty cup. I want us to make a commitment to ourselves. Like, what can we do to better ourselves? Because once you are grounded, once you are in that place of calm and creativity, then it's just going to come up to you. You're just going to see what you need to do, and then it will now be sustainable. So let's start with ourselves. Let's make a commitment to ourselves. Okay. Which special need? You have to, first of all, acknowledge a special need that you have. Acknowledge a special need that you have and make a commitment. How can I go around this? And once you feel that you are whole, then you can reach out to help other people. If you want to take the second step before the first, it's going to be very short-lived and it's not going to be sustainable. Let's start with us. Okay, very simple. Start with yourself. Invest in yourself. You can't give from an empty cup. What for the day? Believe what you are. Know you have a special need. Start from there. Build yourself. Meditate. Do all those things that can keep you going before you can give out. Thank you so much, Zita, for those words. They are touching and inspiring. And what else? We really want to appreciate you for your time. It's an hour and 10 minutes. I really thank you for your time. And not just your time. The values you instill in us today. Yes, we acknowledge it. We appreciate you. And we only pray that the Lord, the uh, God Almighty is going to continue to give you the strength to impact lives. We will support the way we can, as always. And yes, I know you'll never give up. You don't. You have so much that you are looking into. And I pray that God is just going to bless those dreams. And you are going to achieve them all will come to fruition in the mighty name of jesus amen and let me just take this opportunity to thank all, everyone who showed up today thank you for your time i hope this has been worthwhile and i appreciate all your positive comments and when you give out something good you get it back too so i give it back to you thank you very much and i hope you have a wonderful day with your families Okay, thank you so much, Zita. That being said, um, I want to appreciate you all, and I'm going to end this broadcast. Thank you again for coming, and you have a lovely Sunday with your families. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share. If you haven't connected uh, yet with me, try to do so. Just subscribe and share the video, guys. Let's learn and impact lives. Together, we can make it happen. Together, we can break the stigma. Thank you so much, guys. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bye, Zita. Love you. Bye-bye.